Hey everyone, it's Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson, the last one in our unit on arrays, we're going to take a look at how to use two-dimensional arrays. Um, we're going to talk about how they're different from regular built-in arrays, and then we're going to talk about when you would want to use them and how to implement the basic array functions differently when you're working with a 2D array. So what is a 2D array? Well, technically, you can think about it as being a built-in array containing built-in arrays. So it's an array where each slot in the array is storing another array. But how that manifests itself in terms of the way we think about a two-dimensional array is just like its name sounds. Um, it's an array that you can think of as being laid out in a grid where um, you have rows and columns and each spot in the grid has a unique row and column address. Um, but it's a built-in array, and so you should think about it that way, and you should approach it that way from a syntax perspective. What are 2D arrays good for? Well, there are things that they're really good for, and then there are things that you definitely should not use them for. 2D arrays are a really effective tool for uh, representing real-world situations where you need to lay things out in a grid. So if you're working with math, or if you have... Uh, some sort of a game like tic-tac-toe where you have rows and columns. Anything where it's obviously a two-dimensional layout is something that would lend itself well to being modeled with a 2D array. What you don't want to do is what um, used to be done in the past and what some um, I think poor Java instruction still suggests is that you use a two-dimensional array to group together collections of variables and then create lists of those collections. So if we had um, a whole bunch of students and we wanted to group them and then make a list of all those groups, some people would say that you should use a two-dimensional array and use the first coordinate to tell you what the number of the group was and then the second coordinate to specify the individual student. Okay, that's a really ineffective use of object-oriented design because what you really should do in that case is take the group unit and turn it into a class and then just make a one-dimensional array of groups. So don't use two-dimensional arrays as a lazy way of creating collections of collections. That's not a good way to design your programs. Okay, get down off my soapbox. Let's talk about the syntax for two-dimensional arrays. Again, you're going to see a lot of similarity between this approach and when you're working with one-dimensional arrays. Um, we just have to add a little bit of extra code. In the case of creating a two-dimensional array, instead of having one set of square brackets, we're going to have two set of, sets of square brackets. The first set is typically thought of as being the, the, um, the row in your grid, and the second set is thought of as being the column. So remember, rows are horizontally, columns are vertically. So in this case where we're creating uh, a array called my map, it's got 10 rows and 20 columns. And if you want to specify one item in a two-dimensional array, again, you put the coordinates in square brackets with the first coordinate being the row and the second coordinate being the column. And it's worth mentioning too that from this point of view, 0, 0 is the top left-hand corner of our grid, just like 0 is the first element in a one-dimensional array. In this case, the first 0 means it's the first row, and the second 0 means it's the first column. A couple of other things um, that you need to know how to do a little differently with a two-dimensional array. Again, we don't delete things from our 2D arrays just like we don't delete them from our 1D arrays. Um, we don't really have a packed two-dimensional array. I can't think of why you'd ever want to do that. But some things that you do typically want to do are to figure out the size of a two-dimensional array in either direction. The way to figure out the number of rows is the same thing that we've always done. You just use the name of the array dot length. The way you figure out the number of columns is a little bit different. In this case you say um, the name of the array bracket zero dot length. And what that's doing is it's saying Okay, give me the first row, which is a, uh, array bracket 0, and then tell me what the length of that row array is. Remember, 2D arrays are 
arrays of arrays. So if you can get the first row array and figure out its length, then you know the number of columns. As far as navigating over an entire two-dimensional array, like if you wanted to print out the entire array, usually you have to use a nested loop. And if you use two nested for loops, then you can make the outer for loop um, loop over the number of rows and the inner for loop loop over the number of columns. Okay, so in this lesson we talked about when and why you would want to use a 2D array to model some sort of a grid-shaped object in uh, the program that you are designing. We talked about how the syntax is a little different for creating um, two-dimensional arrays, for accessing the items in a two-dimensional array, and then trying to figure out things like the size of the array and things like that. Okay, you're all set.